It's PDAC 2024, and one of my favorite resource industry professionals, Terry Lynch, how are you today? Great to be here, Tracy. Always wonderful to see you. You know, Power Nickel is a company I've been following for, what, a year, year and a half? Yeah. And it's got more followers. Your volume's always fantastic, is it not? It, it is. Volume's been okay, you know. Um, we, ha you know we haven't been able to make that hockey stick up to the right where we're, we're, we feel we're deserved, but, you know, we're, we're getting uh, eyeballs for sure. Of course, you're lining everything up and you've had a number of outstanding news releases recently, many of them technical. So if you could just explain that a little bit to our audience, this is Power Nickel. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, generally the, the technical re uh, releases would be uh, confirming that we've got a major nickel sulfide discovery in NISC. Uh, we posted initially a, an original uh, 7.2 million tons of uh, an I-43-101. And then we announced our, you know, exploration plans for 2024. We started drilling those and, you know, we've announced some hits in there. So we've said this is our best set of exploration prospects we've ever had. And uh, we fully expect to grow this thing. And we, we think Lynn Lake was 22 million tons and Voise Bay is 140. We think we'll be somewhere in between there. And who knows how big this thing can be. For those of you out there, of course, that might be new to nickel, may not appreciate where you're actually located. Would you like to provide some of the most competitive reasons why everyone should be watching power? So we're in Quebec. So Quebec is arguably the best jurisdiction in the world to be looking for critical minerals. Three big reasons. Number one, the infrastructure is already there. So we're located off a of route north, so we don't have to create the roads. It's already there. We drive right to the site. Across the road is Hydro Quebec. So we got that great green power machine right there. We're just eight kilometers outside the town of Namaska. It's got a regional airport and it's got reason number two. Reason number two is Quebec's done an amazing job working with the First Nations. So in this case, our Aboriginal partner is the James Bay Cree probably the most progressive uh, First Nations in Canada, I would think, in terms of mining. And, uh, you know, so the fact that the Quebec government has made them feel like they're a partner, and indeed they do sh share with them royalties, uh, they're very sort of pro-mining. So there's four mines being built, or has two built and two being built within 100 miles, uh, 100 kilometers of uh, Namaska, and we hope there'll be a fifth with us. And uh, so that's a really big plus. Community risk is a big issue in mining. So with, uh, with this situation, it's probably very little. Uh, third big reason to like Quebec is that uh, fiscal incentives are top of the world. So you get two for one expiration. So for every dollar I raise from actual investors, I get $2 to work with. Uh, and then ultimately, as you get to the development stage, you basically have two for one development too. So you get uh, almost 30% federally tax credits for equipping and building a mine, 25% provincially. So it's a pretty phenomenal package, so that's why we love Quebec. Of course, those of you that are more knowledgeable, of course, on nickel may be following what's happening in China, of course, and the Australian markets in particular. Would you have any comments on that? Yeah, you know, I, I think the nickel market is a, a variety of markets, right? I think, A, the, the, the worst of it was last year, and we sort of have seen nickels ticked up a bit, coming from 15,000 back up to 17,500 or so. And I think it'll trade in that 15 to 20,000 range for the next, you know, 12 months or so. And, uh, but generally speaking, um, the um, nickel market, because of the Indonesian influx, has you know, got uh, a bit set back because of COVID and the slowdown in the real estate market in China. So, so nickel's primary driver is stainless steel. So stainless steel uh, is generally considered urbanization. So pots and pans, fridges and stove, buildings, etc., all that consumes the vast amounts of stainless steel. So when, when the COVID came, at, Chinese real estate market slowed down. That was a big slowdown in stainless steel. So that led to a bit of a glut in the market. So that's gradually being, being eaten up. I mean, people will be shocked based on the headlines you'd read. You think nickel demand was going down. No, nickel demand's actually gone up. It's just supply came on that sort of overwhelmed it. But the nickel growth is continuing to go and it's expected to eat that through. And then you look at North American nickel, it's a different animal. Uh, in most concrete evidence we have of that is Samsung's investment in Canada nickel. They could have bought that nickel from Indonesia but they need it in North America. So they're stepping up to the tune of a, you know, a billion dollars sales contract and a, like a $120, $130 million investment, you know, in a, in a very you know, interesting project. But it shows you how desperate you know, uh, people are for North American class one nickel, and that's what power nickel has. So the nickel market has to be understood in that lens. And I say to people on investors, your best investment opportunities when you're going from bad to less bad. And that's what's happening in nickel right now. Well, 
what would what do you wish that people would ask you more often about power nickel? I guess I you know I I I think the big thing that people misunderstand is that. If you look at our market cap and you look at the nickel we've already discovered in the ground, we're by far the least expensive high grade nickel sulfide, uh, you know, uh, exploration play in the world. OK, so I'm not comparing myself to Giga Metals and FPX and Canada Nickel because that's low grade nickel sulfide, a couple billion dollars to develop. Different animal. God bless. I don't really know about that space. Wish them the best of luck. High grade nickel sulfide is quite different. Our plants will probably cost three to four hundred million. Our returns will be you know, probably thirty-five to north of fifty percent. So versus like under twenty. So so it's a different animal. So in that uh, vortex of of uh, nickel sulfide uh, projects around the world, I would argue that we're mathematically the best. People don't get that, and they should. Well, what they should get is out of all the companies that I follow, Power Nickel provides more updates on a regular basis, access to management, regular news releases. Dare I ask you what we should expect in this, uh, in this new year? Well, you know, we're, we're really big believers in transparency. We, we don't try to manufacture like BS news, like I call it. We actually try and put out material news. And, and basically for miners, it's assays. So expect, you know, uh, more drilling updates, more assays. Uh, we've got, obviously, we're doing the feasibility study with CVMR, and that's going to be a big part of our value proposition. People don't understand that enough either and what impact that's going to have. We're going to become a nickel refiner, not just a nickel miner. And the difference, just to illustrate the point, LME nickel right now, 17.5, nickel powder, 80,000. So where do you want to be? You want to be a refiner. So you can't get there from here unless you actually have tapped in or partnered with that expertise, we've done that. So that's that's the, a real edge for us that others don't have and it's, they can't replicate. So, you know, I, I think the uh, I think the next, uh, you know, six months, we'll see uh, some updates from, uh, you know, probably just after PDAC, we'll get the benchmark uh, studies out from CVMR, which will show that the, one of the big reasons we, we like them so much is that currently when you, as a miner, when you're making your 43101, you have to, uh, do the engineering and show you can do a condensate. So making a condensate, you're making it for the old technology and the smelters that are available to you. So how Rio wants to receive it, how Valet wants to receive it, how Glencore wants to receive it. So that costs us recovery. So our rec nickel recovery is around 70% in our 43101 and that impacts what your tonnage is because you're obviously your, your, your grade cutoff is impacted. With CVMR, we're probably gonna raise it to 90%. And, uh, and not only do, or do we raise, we're going to recover more nickel, but they, uh, their process, they sell uh, iron, iron powder. 12% of our ore body is iron. That's a waste product in the condensate process. It's a paying product with CVMR. So we fully expect minimum two and a half, three times LME pricing for our process. So that's profound. As always, Terry, what a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us today. Great to be here. Thanks, Trizzy.